What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. You know, I was sitting here this morning and I'm uploading my morning video and stuff. You know, I I am a blessed man, and um, I I believe that you create your blessings by how hard you work. If you come up with a plan, if you bust your ass, because there's no there's nothing short of working hard that's going to get you anywhere you want to be. Um, and that's not to say I'm where I want to be. I will, I will go to my grave, not satisfied with doing enough. I can tell you that right now, no matter if I do someday become successful, you may be brighter than me. You may have more advantages to me, but I'm going to tell you the thing that I will have that is going to make sure that I get there is that you will never outwork me. And that's my own personal belief. So I'm sitting here uploading this video and, you know, I, I, I like to be like a digester of knowledge and opinions and things like that and investigate and try and put together the dots and all this, that and the other here on the Joe Boo Sports Report and give you different perspective and angles and stuff. I'm not by any means right all the time. I'm not. Um, and it's OK, because I don't think there's anybody out there that is doing this that is right all of the time. Um, you know, we've seen the talking heads that will tell you that this is a can't miss pick that ends up being a can't miss pick. So here's the thing that's interesting. I came across get up. They're having discussion because let's be clear here. There's drama with the Cowboys. There is drama with the Cowboys. But I think the drama is made bigger than what it may be because of the media. The media creates more of this drama or makes it seem like it's worse than maybe it is. I don't know. I, I, I'm not there at the Cowboys organization. You know, what I do know this is the Cowboys and Jerry Jones make the media dance for them. They do. Because they will literally take stuff and literally do the, the work for the Cowboys, all of the publicity and everything else, without it costing the Cowboys a sense, just by Jerry Jones saying a couple of sentences. So one of those things is where Jerry Jones has made him dance for him. They're dancing for Jerry right now. Is this whole thing of, you know, the contract, you know, you know with Dak, you only go as far as Dak takes us. No, that's not true. Because you can have Dak Prescott play a perfect game, but if you're giving up 40-plus points and can't stop anybody, you know, we've seen uh, Tony Romo score 48 points against the Denver Broncos, and we couldn't get a single stop, and we lose 51-48. That's just the way it is. So this thing now is that Dak Prescott, he should go in and demand a trade from the Cowboys. He should go in because he's being disrespected. Now, Hypothetically, just just bear with me for a second here. Hypothetically, you know what? You can pay me fifty nine million dollars and not show me any love whatsoever. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, BS walks and cash talks. You know what? I take fifty nine million dollars and disrespect me all you want. Tell me you hate me. I don't care. But if Dak Prescott really were one of those sensitive ass biatches out there that felt like he was disrespected and didn't want to be here and stuff and wanted to be out. Here's the thing. If you felt that way, and if you've been in a relationship where you're pissed off at the person that you've been dating or your husband or your wife and all that, generally speaking, what happens when you break up? Ladies, you want to take everything he owns. Half, Eddie, I want half, right? You want to take them for the clean. You don't want to necessarily want them to do well because you're leaving. You want to burn the bridges. You want that mother humper to suffer. Now, you've been with the Cowboys since 2016. If you were to go to the Cowboys and say, I demand a trade, I want out of here. You're benefiting the Cowboys. You're giving them the beach house in the divorce. You're giving them the fancy car. Because that would be the ideal situation for the Cowboys. Because they'd get cap relief. They'd get draft picks. 
and all that. You, you follow what I'm saying? That would be, okay, hey, you know, I got a couple of number ones for Dak Prescott, and I got cap relief right now. We're in good shape. No, 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 no. If I want to break up with you, Dak Prescott hasn't made. Because why give the Cowboys a couple of number one picks and hurt the team that you're going to? If you really want out of Dallas... You just wait a year. You just don't sign a contract. They can restructure me, but they're still going to pay me. Regardless of what I do, I'm going to get $59 million. I'm going to get $59 million. I can either help them and get out a year sooner, or I can screw them to the wall. Uh, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Because I want you to think back, because this is not new. This is where I say, you, you got to look at everything. You remember the Raiders. The Raiders basically said to Derek Carr, go find the team you want to go to. We're done here. Let's get a divorce. Let's be equitable. You know, you can go where you want to go. We'll be okay. And you can go. They let him go around. He went around, you know, dating all the new people and everything else. And he found a place he wanted to go to with New Orleans. And he said to himself, why do I want to help them? This relationship's done. It's okay. But you're just going to release me. You're going to be, it's going to cost you. And you're not getting anything in return. If Dak Prescott truly, truly felt disrespected, revenge is a dish best served cold. So everybody thinking and acting like Dak Prescott needs the Dallas Cowboys. Dak, poor, poor Dak. If he doesn't have the Dallas Cowboys, he's not going to. Listen, Dak Prescott has got most of the Cowboys records. Dak Prescott has been NFL man of the year. Dak Prescott has been, you know, offensive rookie of the year or whichever one it was. Dak Prescott has made more money than he'll ever be able to spend. So this whole idea, and trust me, if Dak Prescott were a free agent, if Dak Prescott's idea is I want to win a Super Bowl, the best thing you can do for the team that you want to go to is make sure they're not giving up a couple number ones so you can get more people around you. You understand what we're, I mean, doesn't that make more sense than saying, screw you, I want out of here, and you end up going to some place that's downtrodden, needs a quarterback, and has no draft picks. You got to think outside the box, people. That's how you truly hurt the Dallas Cowboys. Screw them as far as the cap goes, and don't give up any compensation for them. Um, I want to play, because the reason why I'm going through here on this is how ESPN... They're literally enjoying the drama that's created by, I mean, that, listen, that, here it is. We're a week away from the Super Bowl. We got the Pro Bowl right now. We got the Senior Bowl. And here we are talking about a player demanding a trade. Having a lot of fun. One of the things that keeps it fun is, uh, is all the drama keeps that goes fun. on on a regular basis <laughs> with Dallas keeps Cowboys, uh, and this week has provided plenty. Yesterday, defensive coordinator Dan Quinn was hired away from the Cowboys by the rival Washington Commanders to be their head coach, so they're going to have to find a replacement for him. Meanwhile, Wednesday, Micah Parsons broke his uncharacteristic silence after the playoff loss to the Packers. On his podcast, Parsons sent a message to Jones saying the Cowboys need to go all in. For 2024, and Tuesday it was Jones himself who ignited a bit of a firestorm about his quarterback, Dak Prescott, going to be entering the final year of his contract. Jerry didn't exactly commit to giving Dak a long-term deal this offseason. Listen, Dak has done nothing to change my mind of any uh, promise for the future. I think I said in the deal that we'd go as far as Dak takes us in the playoffs. Remember that? Right. We go as far as Dak takes us, right. how you play? and that's how far we went. Oh, right. So okay. So my point is that doesn't change a thing. Okay. Where we'll go as far as Dak takes us. Okay. He's got this unbelievable ability to like, <laughs> like 
like give you the eyes of like you hear what I'm saying, right? Like you hear what I'm saying, but you also hear what I'm saying. Oh. Yeah, that, that's that's Jerry. You picking up what I'm putting down right there? Yeah. Dak Prescott has one year left on his contract, and his cap number this year is fifty nine and a half mm -hmm. million dollars. Mike T, our resident GM, uh, from my standpoint, that feels like a really high number. You? It is, but you could kill two birds with one stone, Dan. You could give him a really big sign bonus. $100, $150 million, and just for simple illustration, on a five-year extension, $150 million to Dak Prescott would only count $30 million on their salary cap. So mm -hmm. there's actually ways they could lower the salary cap number and extend it out a number of years. And Dee Wood made a great point earlier, Graz. <coughs> you know, in terms of their priorities for the offseason, it's Dak, Dak, and Dak. Once you get that figured out, Massive signing bonuses for Micah Parsons, C.D. <coughs> Lamb. You got to keep that young nucleus together. Yeah. It's somewhat of an aggressive strategy, but Somewhere. because they're young, hopefully they'll be able to earn out those bonuses. <laughs> Some hundred and fifty million dollars signing just, bonus. Just yeah. make that money off. Look, I mean, they, they could give Dak an extension. Mm -hmm. They could, they could not, right? right. They, could, they could do do some tricks to stretch it out and maybe knock the cap number down a yeah. little bit. Boy, but if, if he doesn't get an extension, mm -hmm. then if you're Dak, what would you be thinking? Daniel, let me tell you, I like a man who is obsessed with me. Where there are no questions we go. about how strongly he cares, is he feeling me, <coughs> does he know I'm the one. In Dallas, I'm always sort of left like, do they love Dak? Do they really, really love him? Because it's clear in Baltimore, it is clear in Buffalo, it is clear in Philly, in places where we have seen those quarterbacks come up short lose in embarrassing fashions, and yet everybody from the people in the locker room to the head coach to the front office, the owners, say, this is my guy. And instead, in Dallas, we have played the, the put up the tweets from the family. We have taught, we've played the Jerry sound, and I'm just not feeling it. I'm just not. So, what about you, D-Wood? If I'm feeling. Dak, I would want out. I, because you should feel love. At that position, you should. You don't... You don't think I ain't it? Okay, well, I could go. I could take my money and go. Okay. <laughs> they did pay him, right? I mean, How long they had you know. to make him wait, though? Well, I mean, that was, he was part of that, too, though. Like, okay. he, was make, he was giving them a little bit of a hard time on the contract as well. So, it's not like they've never done it. Yeah, listen, part of me wants Dak to be petty. I don't know if that's in his nature, though, because, mm -hmm. I mean, Dak has always uh, acquitted himself. Like, he's always carried himself at the yeah, highest standard. So, I don't know <laughs> if that's in his nature or whatever. Yeah. But, listen... Part of me does want to see Dak somewhere else, but when you're playing for the Dallas Cowboys, right. think about what that co mm -hmm. what comes with that. As much as we talk about, we've been harping on all the other stuff, but think mm -hmm. about what you know when things are going great. What comes with that? Not only during your during your um, during your career, but post career. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think at the end of the day, Dak Prescott is going to want to stay there in Dallas, get this thing figured out and continue to make runs with that star on his You helmet. sound like you're reading from a copy. All right, there you go. Um, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know what? You could disrespect the hell out of me and make me the highest paid player in the NFL. Got no problem with that. Or you can go ahead and pay me, and I can pick the team I want to go to and not hurt them. Just saying. We always think of, or some of y'all always think that it's just a one-way street that we're, please, sir, can I have some more? But Dak's got options. He just does. And the reason he has options is the guy's a good player, regardless of what you think. And guys that are doing things that he's doing, there's not a lot of men on the planet that can do that. Maybe it's not working here in Dallas, but you can't look at the quarterback and say it's solely that guy. You got to look at the guy who's up here creating all this drama. This guy who's up here talking about Mike McCarthy's going into a lame duck year. This is not the first time we've done stupid shit like this because of his cheap ass. You're sending a message to everybody. Anybody who wants to come in here and be, you know, the defensive coordinator, they look in and say that everything can be blown up in a year. You turn around and say, we're going all in. Well, what does that mean when you don't have a contract for your quarterback pass this year or your head coach? The way you do business, I don't know how you became the number one franchise in the world. I guess it's just the drama. It's cray cray. That's all I can say. It's cray cray. But, you know, regardless of what you guys think, 
Dak Prescott, he going to be all right. I can guarantee you. He going to be all right. Peace.